Imagine having to deal with crazy entitled parents when you're only one week postpartum. We'll get into that in a bit, but first, my mom keeps trying to convince me to have my baby on my dad's birthday. Hello again. So, my baby is due in late November, three days before my dad's birthday. I've already found out it's a boy through DNA testing. While I didn't want to tell my parents the gender, as per previous Entitled Parent posts I've made, my husband told me to just tell them because we all know how dramatic they'll be in the future if they find out by anyone else or other means. So I told them. Now, my dad is still trying to convince me to name the baby after him. No, nope, it's not happening. And then yesterday, my mom, for the second time, tried to convince me to give birth on my dad's birthday. As in, try to wait to go into labor until I am three days past due. Like that is something I would want to do, or could control. She requested it, in the family group chat. After I gave a resounding and rather harsh, not gonna happen, my parents have been radio silent since. Are these people for real? Edit to add, this is my third baby, and will be my second boy. My dad was disappointed that we didn't name my first son after him. Also, it looks like the saga of my parents wanting to visit during the month of the baby's birth will start up. Something my husband and I absolutely refused with our second born. We live 15 hours away from my parents, and they are the least helpful and most overbearing people to have around. I documented the saga with my first son, so if you're curious, check out my profile. I just have to say, OP saying not gonna happen and them going radio silent? Probably just about the best thing for your stress levels at this point. Better than them coming back and saying yes, really, or arguing with you. Guilty Peach 1208 wrote, Sounds like they're doing you a favor with the silent treatment. OP responded saying, I know, right? I'm almost to the point of blocking them anyway. I would now, but we're planning a trip to my home state for the first week of July. So I need to be in contact for the itinerary of the trip. We're making to have solid plans with other people as well, so they don't hijack the whole thing. My dad is already trying. The problem with them being so entitled is that the rest of the family, grandparents, uncles, aunt and cousins, are pretty chill. So if I cut them off, I will have to cut almost everyone else off as well because they're big on, but they're your parents, they're family. I am essentially low contact with everyone. Also, hi, I'm Steven, and if you guys enjoy crazy stories of entitled parents, why not hit those like and subscribe buttons down below? That said, our next story is, Entitled Parents demanded we brought birthday gifts for all her kids, and not just the birthday boy. So my auntie has two kids. One is a boy who is so adorable and no trouble at all, he's eight, and my evil cousin who's a girl and is two. She wants everything. Seriously, if you have something and she doesn't, she holds her breath and won't breathe until she has it and cries non-stop until she gets what she wants. Anyways, it was the 8-year-old's birthday and he was having a birthday party. However, my auntie told me it would be a party for the girl too, whose birthday was in December? There would be two cakes, birthday banners with her name on, and people would have to pretend it was her birthday too. Like what? How is this fair to the actual birthday boy? Anyway, she also told everyone we had to bring gifts for both of the kids and if not, we weren't able to attend because it had to be fair for the both of them. I did not buy presents for both kids, but attended anyway and it was something for my worst nightmare. Everyone was tending to the girl and no one besides me acknowledged the actual birthday boy. People even sang happy birthday to her taking pictures of her. She got loads of money, a new bike, etc. She got double what the birthday boy got. I felt so bad for him and I saw him crying in his room, so I went up and he said no one cares about him. So I argued with my auntie regarding this and she said I've ruined the day and I need to leave. What an entitled woman and her horrid entitled bratty kid. Absolutely, this lady deserved to be called out and not just behind closed doors, honestly in front of everybody. How does anybody attend this and not like understand how weird and bizarre this is? Listen, I know this is a birthday for my 8 year old son, but my 2 year old also has to have everything celebrated for them too. What? Blackmore Vale wrote, You did the right thing. Your aunt's raising a brat that no one will stand to be around. I know because my cousins are the same. The older one forgotten and the younger one was clearly the favorite. The 8 year old is going to freak off at the earliest opportunity and then your aunt is going to come crying to anyone who will listen how she was this perfect mom and she can't understand how he can go no contact with her. This next story is, my mom gets irritated whenever I talk to her. 
Am I annoying or she doesn't like me? I, 20 year old female, grew up as a lonely child. I had brothers, but I still felt lonely because I wanted a sister. I would fill that void by going to my friend's house who had many sisters. That hit me the most when I was a teenager. I was seeing my friends with sisters, giving them advice, getting ready together, do girly things and understand their girly problems, etc. Meanwhile, I had no one, so I had to learn most of the things by myself. The only one I could trust and tell my issues to was my mom, but the problem is that my mom would tell everything to my dad. I never had a stable relationship with her. The more I grew up, the more she seems repelled by me, I guess. She seemed to love me more when I was a child. She tells me her problems and I listen, but when it comes to me, she gets triggered. I don't tell her a lot about my problems because her reactions are so negative. For example, when I have a stomach or any kind of pain in my body and I tell her, she reacts so weirdly and negatively it makes me shut up and would rather suffer in silence. An hour ago, I was talking to her about a topic I'm very passionate about, which is psychology, neuroscience, and childhood trauma. I love talking about that. She seemed so annoyed at first, and then she ended up making a very exaggerated reaction, screaming and shouting, telling me that she wishes I was never born and how much she hates me. Like what? I literally left her and went to my room. Can someone explain why is that? Whenever she tells me about her stupid stories and how my father's family mistreated her, she seems so engaged and I listen and I help her. Same thing when her sister talks to her about some stupid scenarios that happened with her neighbors, she seems so excited. When I talk to her about my life or my interests, she gets triggered and irritated. What should I do? I tell her because I simply want somebody to listen. Even though she makes fun of me with my brother sometimes, I want somebody to listen. I have friends, but we don't have the same interests. I can never see myself talking about body language or trauma with my friends. They'll think I'm crazy. Should I find new people to talk with? I don't know if there could be something more going on here, but honestly, it does sound like they're kind of tolerating you and not really all that interested in you the way you would hope your mom would. I gotta say it is sad that OP feels like they have nobody to talk to as far as their personal day-to-day things. CJ Craig's Goldfish wrote, A lot of women have babies because they think they're cute, and never seem to realize that babies become children who become adults, which are much less cute than babies. The expense and responsibilities remain the same, however, and they come to resent the kids as they grow older. Also, your mom just seems like a jerk, possibly a narcissist. Check out subs on Reddit here for more on how to cope with a narcissistic parent. I had one, so I definitely feel for you. Our next story is, every time something good happens to me, my entitled mother tries to sabotage it. Every year for my birthday, she ruins it by trying to make it my worst day. She starts arguments with me until I'm broken down in tears every single year on my birthday. When we were so broke down and couldn't even afford food, I was going to interviews, and she tried everything she could to get me not to go. She talked about my appearance and told me I didn't look good for my interview. Every time I met a nice guy, she finds a way to not like them and then prevented me from going out with these people because I live with her and she said if I come back late, she wasn't going to open her door. When I finally got a good job, she got mad. I couldn't find a way to work, so she said she doesn't care but literally begs for money whenever I have it. She also said I'm not going to have money when she doesn't like full on pout and acting like a child. So I had to find people to take me to work and give me money for lift here and there. It's like she wants to see me fail. I don't really know if it's that she wants to see you fail or if it's she doesn't want you to have your own independence. Like she wants to be able to retain control over you and your finances. She wants your money to be her money. She wants your career to be under her control. She wants that right to be able to tell you, yes, you can leave or no, you can't leave. Vegetable Cod 2340 wrote, Not so much that she wants you to fail, but she wants your self-esteem so low that you never try to leave her. OP, what if you meet a person that loves you and points out how toxic your mom is? They may convince you to leave. The same with a job. You get one and see how independent your coworkers are and how they do what they want and go on vacations and you'll want to do the same. She wants you to stay where you are, miserable next to her. Please get out. Our next story is, my mother won't leave me alone. I posted a few times here about my entitled, abusive, and demanding mother. When we left off, she was mad at me for not reading her mind and inviting her over to my place after she ordered me to come get her leftovers. I couldn't do it and she snapped. 
The pent-up anger snapped in me and I stopped reaching out. That was on the 30th of April. I had an appointment with my psychologist, who told me to take a break from the situation and to concentrate on myself and see how I felt about it all. Mother's Day was less than two weeks later on the 12th of May. I posted about a few of the past Mother's Days I had with her and how demanding she was of me in those times. It felt good to rant a bit. I didn't reach out to her, she didn't reach out to me. It was peaceful with no expectations. She, however, wasn't happy. She ranted at family that I didn't wish her on that day and that made me a bad daughter. How selfish and ridiculous I was being. How she didn't understand what she did so wrong. Nobody told me anything about it. They were all gossiping among themselves. It's just as good for me. I prefer that to flying monkeys. On the 13th, my husband received a text from my mom calling us cruel. He didn't answer. On the 15th in the afternoon, my mom texted to ask how long I would punish her, and she was sorry that I was angry. She wanted explanations and that she loved me. That night at 11.25, she texted me that she would come see me. That stressed me the freak out. She did not come see me on the 16th. I was anxious all day as I usually don't do well with confrontation due to my autism and usually shut down. My husband asked me to keep all cameras on during the day just in case. He wanted video evidence if she showed up. When he came back from work, he had a freak it moment, took our son and went to buy new locks for the house. He installed them the same night. He took our son with him in case she showed up because I didn't want to be alone with my mother and very vulnerable son together. On the 17th, my husband got a call from my brother. Not me, my husband. My brother wanted to know what was going on because he was receiving multiple calls daily about my mother's side of things and wanted my husband's side. My husband asked for a minute as he was at work, called me and asked me what he should say. I told him to tell my brother it was none of his business but that our mom was well aware of what she did wrong as I told her and she hadn't apologized. He called my brother and passed on the message. I wasn't contacted. My anxiety wasn't much better. I was spiraling a bit. On the 18th of May, while my husband was trying to sleep off a migraine, my mom showed up out of the blue. She texted me that she was in front of the house. That got me angry. Really angry. I had to wake my husband, who didn't look like he should be walking around, ask him to bring our toddler in his playpen and keep him away from windows, and confront my mom. The bench parked out of earshot of our ring camera. My husband is certain she did it on purpose. I tend to agree. She was, however, inside of both our doorbell ring, our front yard camera, my neighbor's cameras, and quite a few of my neighbors whom were out and about. People I know who would have interfered if I'd yelled. She was acting all sad, like she didn't know what she did. I confronted her, told her I couldn't read minds, told her she always expected me to. She denied it. I pulled out quite a few examples. I told her she was always asking too much of me. She denied it. I gave more examples. She asked if it made her a bad mom. I told her yes, but not as much as hitting us so much she feared the equivalent of our CPS. She denied beating us. It was just moments of craziness. She didn't hit us otherwise. I could have given multiple examples of her bouts of craziness, but her hitting us wasn't that high on my list of what made her a bad mom. Not as much as not only having drugs in the house, or making me do illegal stuff as young as a preteen to make her money, sometimes for multiple hours, and telling me at 14 that if I don't do the illegal stuff that we'd lose the house and be homeless. She started crying. Not as much as her girlfriend trying to sell me for drugs with examples. You know her, she was just joking. I told her no, that she does know her and that she knew it wasn't a joke. Heck, she probably knew at the time that it wasn't a joke. And either way, those are not jokes one should tolerate being said about their minor daughter. Then I told her about her never protecting us from any of her partners. Not from our dad, not from her ex-girlfriend, from no one. She denied it. I brought up that in July last year, her ex threatened to have me and one of my brothers killed, and that she refused to even open a file with police. I didn't have enough proof. Yet a few weeks later, when the very same woman threatened to beat her up, she did go and file a police report. I reminded her that she knew the woman was insane enough to attempt to take our lives and that I have a baby. She just cried harder, sobbing really. I then told her that she never protected me and that I can't trust her to do the best for or to protect my son. She stopped crying. You know I would protect him like I always protected you. 
She seemed so offended that I wouldn't trust her with my son. I wanted to punch her, break her nose, make her feel a sliver of the pain she put me through. I walked off into my home. She stayed in her car, yelling about me not walking off and to act like an adult. I ignored her. I didn't give a parting comment, didn't look back and just walked in, locked the door, and went to hug my son and husband. She stayed parked in the street a few minutes and sped off angrily when she realized I wouldn't come back out. I cried a lot. It really was a lot to take in how little she saw of her being a bad mom. Later that night she sent me a text. Here it is in its entirety, roughly translated for it to make sense. Your memories are really biased love. Except for the events at the store where you and your siblings ended up with red thighs. You were never beaten. I did my best. I never said I'd been perfect, but I always try to protect you the best I could. I'm sorry for being your mom. Now I'll leave you alone. Take good care of yourself. I didn't answer. I spoke to my psychologist. He told me I had two choices because she would never change. I had to accept that this is who my mother would always be. So I either accept her in my life, as is, or I kick her from my life. My decision had already been taken and I decided to go no contact. I know she's not done though, and she will do crazy stuff to get my attention and decided not to block her. No contact orders are very difficult to get here and you need a lot of evidence, so I decided not to block her. My psychologist was sure she wouldn't reach out anytime soon. I wish she was right. On the 22nd, my mom sent me another message. She typed in a word per message telling me to contact her when I'm done being psychotic. Nine messages in all. I didn't answer. Now, the reason I'm posting, it's my son's birthday in a week and she just texted asking, can I see him for his birthday? What do I do if she shows up? Once again, I don't see my psychologist before the birthday. Edit, my husband was of the opinion to send one last message about how she was not welcome, and I wanted no contact going forward, because so far, everything concerning future contact had only been verbal. He said it would help prove our case for a no contact order later, so I did. My text was simple, no mom, you're not allowed to see son on his birthday. You are not allowed to come to our home. I do not want any contact with you. This is the English version. She received one in her maternal tongue. There are no ways to take this the wrong way. Well, she answered, Frankly, you need to be treated. Change psychologist. She went on again, speaking of the events at the store. Now, the story isn't funny, but my reaction to it apparently was, because a child who normalized being hit that much is normal, apparently. She says she will not impose on me, but will contact my brother to come give me everything I've ever given her and get her keys back. She also sent my husband a text telling him I needed treatment. Again, about the story where she hit us at the store. Again, how the story isn't funny, but my reaction was. Again, about contacting my brother to exchange plants and keys. And her hoping I'll get better one day. Adding, for my husband's benefit, that I'm breaking her heart. She doesn't deserve this treatment because she's always done her best. My husband is now enraged. I am enraged and sad. She can officially go freak herself, and if she tries to come here or get in, I will call the cops and pay a lawyer for a cease and desist. First step to get a restraining order. This crap has gone on for long enough. I will give one last update after the exchange of stuff. Hopefully that will be my last update. Thankfully in the update, OP immediately started going right where they needed to, working towards that no contact order, working towards that restraining order. State that you don't want them around, tell them that you don't want to see them, get that on record, and if you gotta build a case to finally get it in the end, yesterday's the best time to start. Silver Six Rules wrote, Cops, the second she shows up, have Hawkeyes on the door, keep your guard up, and don't engage. Let everyone know she's not to be there and she is not invited in case she tries to weasel her way in through someone else. You're doing the right thing keeping her far away from your family. It's what she deserves for being a crap parent and having no remorse about it and not taking accountability. She screwed herself. OP responded saying, that's my reflex. I was just wondering if it was overkill to call the cops if she shows up. Thank you. Our next story is, parents think I'm their property. Hey, I don't want to get into much details into my private life. Hope you appreciate that, lads. So as the title says, especially my dad, you know it's bad when a father sees and reflects himself in his daughter. They see me as their pretty porcelain doll that they can dress as a Barbie. They see me as their jewelry that they show so proudly. They see me as a princess. 
Truth is, I am not. Me, 21 year old female, I am much more of a beggar, just living to survive on my own and depressed. I was almost an alcoholic and an ex hikikomori for three years in my pre-young adult and my young adult years, and they really want me to give up my life up to their control, and I suspect that they'll even choose who I'm marrying by force, so they continue being dirty rich. The only good reactions is when I do something that they really want me to do. They don't give a freak about my emotions. They only screamed at me in my childhood, teach me to bottle up my emotions and traumatized me. My dad wanted me to lick his love and attention from a knife, throwing me money in my childhood. All I learned from that is to learn to rely on me, solve problems myself when they are overprotective in that aspect, but they still see me as their doll. They don't like when I choose my romantic partners, when I work, had to set boundaries when I entered college, dare to sabotage or say a word about stop working, I will drop college, when I'm myself, they don't like the fact that I play video games, spend my time playing them, and spend my money on it, even try to force me to be social, I am not. They think because they always said to me, prepare as a queen, my mom, to a visit that wasn't even mine, like who's coming? Queen Elizabeth? The Queen of Spain? Not even when she's coming. I wasn't gonna waste my makeup and nicest dress for those five minutes, as I always like my time alone or with my partner. He's my voice of reason, never did me wrong, loves me unconditionally, and just wants to be happy like me. Maybe the reason they don't like him, and I'll always be in my most comforting loose clothing and sneakers. At least presentable and not that bad. So what are your thoughts? My opinion? They can go freak themselves. I'm a human, not a doll. I have a life. These are the kinds of parents that if you can, you get away from and you never look back. They clearly want to control you. They clearly want to mold you into something that they can mooch off of and succeed for the rest of their life. And I agree, they kind of see OP as this possession. Bookworm Trisha wrote, If they're supporting you, you have a problem. If you and your boyfriend are supporting you, you can cut contact with your parents way back ignore them most of the time. Our next story is one week postpartum and mom is giving me intense attitude and sass for being rude to her and my dad. I just gave birth to our second kid a week ago. The past week has been rough. Baby blues, bleeding non-stop down there from the dinner plate sized wound in my uterus, feeling of uncertainty, not sleeping enough, compounded with the fact that my newborn cried for two nights in a row when we first brought her home. I would get up and weep for a good half hour before starting my day. To say I was a hot mess would be an understatement. Things improved a little the past couple of days. I was able to get about four hours of shut eyes each night. I thought my baby blues were getting better, but I would still get overly emotional thinking about random things like not being able to spend more time with my older kid and feeling like an incompetent mom in general. My parents are in town to help us out, essentially playing postpartum nanny to me and helping with the kids if needed. They arrived two weeks ago and haven't really needed to deal with the kids too much since my husband is home on paternity leave and my older kid goes to preschool during the week. My parents' main role so far has been to cook me postpartum food, making sure everyone is fed, and helping my older kid get ready for school in the morning if my husband is too busy. My husband tried to educate my parents about baby blues and postpartum depression and told them specifically that I'm currently in a very vulnerable state. My parents, however, seem to have brushed it off, because in their words, they have never known anyone who suffered from it. Even when I tried to talk to them and getting teary-eyed from my emotions, they were disappointingly dismissive and basically told me to stop feeling sorry for myself. This morning, as I was having breakfast, my husband set my newborn down for a nap in the living room bassinet. She was drowsy but about to doze off. My dad came over and stared and made funny noises at her, which woke her up more. I got impatient and told him to stop stimulating her since it's time for a nap. My tone might have been a bit harsh, but I wasn't scolding him, it's purely out of impatience. My mom overheard me and immediately yelled at my dad to get up and go back to their room. Right away, I can feel that she's mad at me for what I said to my dad. Knowing her, whatever she yelled at him was really her passively telling me off. After that incident, she went ahead and gave me the worst attitude, slamming doors, ignoring me when I tried to talk to them, etc. I had an opportunity to talk to my dad and asked him what's going on. He said my mom is mad that I talked to him in such a harsh tone. That was when the floodgates opened and I started crying. I told him I have more than enough on my plate right now and I don't understand why I have to appease my mom too. 
It's like having to take care of another child. I didn't mean anything bad when I told my dad to shush so the baby can sleep, but my mom's interpretation took it to a whole other level. That on top of my already messed up hormones sent me into uncontrollable wailing. My husband saw what was happening and flew into a rage demanding that my mom stop whatever passive crap she's throwing at me. My mom's response is to become hysterical herself and yelling that she didn't say anything to offend me and that I've been incredibly rude to her and my dad since I came home from the hospital. She even called me a liar for supposedly feeding falsehoods to my husband that paints them as the bad guys. My husband said he does not care what her defense is, but making a one-week postpartum mom cry is not acceptable. He told me to go to my room to be away from the negativity. While I was leaving, my mom continued to hurl insults at me, saying things like, You reserve all your good temper for everyone else and give your parents the crappy end. And, You are a mom yourself, how can you behave like this? My husband was caught between arguing with her and trying to get my older kid away from her grandma's temper tantrum. In his words, my mom was acting like a total brat in front of our toddler, and that was unforgivable. Anyhow, my husband is bringing my older kid to his mom's house to get away from the bad juju. I'm seeking refuge in my own bedroom with the newborn. I'm too exhausted to deal with my mom's brattiness. Essentially, I'm a prisoner in my own home for the moment, all while trying to recover from childbirth. These people honestly just need to go away and leave Opie alone. Really, I think you're better off just trying to manage it between you and your husband than putting up with any ounce of this kind of nonsense. Clearly, this isn't working out and is making things just way harder than it needs to. Fancy Introduction 60 wrote, OP, as a grandmother, I really think you need to send them packing now. They are contributing to your postpartum depression and it's only going to get worse. I am so sorry you're going through this. I can tell you it's going to get better, but I know from experience that it probably doesn't feel that way right now. Sending a giant grandma hug. But with that being said, that's all the time we have for today. Now, if you want to hear another absolutely crazy entitled parent story, check out that video on the left. Or if you missed my latest video, check out that video on the right. That said, I'll see you all next time with some more stories.